Our next speaker really doesn't come from the GIS world or the geo world really at all. Uh, he comes from the, the hardcore, well, we say hardcore here anyways, uh, IT world. And uh, one of the, the things I think that's had a, a huge impact on probably all of our thinking about what information sharing means and how to, to, to do it uh, has been, of course, the, the arrival of XML. And uh, some people love it and some people hate it, and, uh, but it's definitely a, a very important uh, aspect of uh, much of what we're talking about, whether we're looking at GML or KML or you know, uh, SOA-based uh, web services. So uh, our next speaker is Michael Kay, uh, and he is a, a very well-known uh, person in the XML world. Uh, he is the creator of Saxon, uh, which is a XSLT engine, uh, probably the most, well, I'm sure it's the most widely used uh, XSLT engine uh, in the world. Uh, I'm sure many people here have solutions or products that somehow make use of, uh, of Saxon uh, and use XSLT. Uh, he's been uh, uh, very active also as a, a publisher, of, or author, I should say, uh, of, of books on things like XQuery and XSLT uh, and has been very active uh, in the standards activities uh, around uh, those languages uh, which of course are key aspects of things that we do here. So uh, I'm going to turn things over uh, to, to Michael and uh, like you can see the title of his talk, Does XML Change the Landscape? Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Ron. XML has been around for 10 years now, so it's not exactly um, a talk about you know, the next big wave that's coming along to hit you soon. It's rather more of a, a, a retrospective, I think, to, to um, assess what impact XML has had in the last 10 years. I think it's still true that um, the full impact of XML hasn't yet been felt. It's been felt more in some areas than, than, it, than in others. There's some areas where it's still got to make a, 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 a significant penetration at all, whereas in this field it's, um, it's obviously made a significant impact already. Um, ten years is a long time and I've been doing XML most of that time, but um, I've got quite a lot of grey hair and I was around before then. Um, and a lot of my career I was um, spent doing information management, information modelling um, in the context of different database models relational database models before that, hierarchic and codicil models. Um, so I don't re really regard myself as an XML person. I regard myself as an, an information management and, and modeling person with the last 10 years of my career just being majoring on the, 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 the XML implications of that. So I'll be talking a lot in this talk about information in general and, and how XML helps the problem of, of, of information management. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about what XML is, is, is and isn't. Um, it's more than just angle brackets. Um, what XML achieves and what it, what, what it doesn't achieve in terms of helping us to manage information. Um, I'll try and relate that to the particular challenges of um, geospatial information. Though, as Ron said, um, I'm by no means an expert in that specific area. But in a sense, that gives me an outside perspective. It enables me to, to look at what this community is doing and compare it with what, what, what other communities are doing and see whether the challenges are the same or whether they're different, um, and whether, some, whether looking from the outside, I see you tackling exactly the same problems that everyone else is tackling or, or, or whether there's some particular um, special um, aspects of the, 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 the space that you've chosen to carve out for yourselves. Um, I'm not so much going to look at future directions for XML, but more about the, the, the future directions for the exploitation of, of XML as a, as, as a vehicle for helping you solve inf information management problems. Um, so it's a bit of a, bit of a round tour, um, starting with XML, going into information modeling, and then coming back again to, to, to XML at the end. Um, and um, one of the challenges in doing this kind of talk um, is to give a, a very high-level perspective without descending into pure waffle. Um, I'm going to try and um, guard against the, 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 
the danger of descending into a waffle while still remaining at, at, at quite a high level. Um, so some contrasting perspectives on, on XML. Um, the original inventors of XML were very keen on the notion that, that, that XML is just syntax. XML is angle brackets. Um, it has no meaning. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, we don't care. Um, we make no rules about how you use it. Um, you can do anything you want. Um, there's another school of thought that says XML is an information model. Information model here in the sense of a meta model, um, a, a, a way of building information models. Um, documents have meaning, information has meaning, XML structures are a way of capturing that meaning, XML schemas are a way of, of, of describing the, 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 the meaning. Ultimately, um, XML has semantics rather than, rather than just being, being syntax. Um, so those two um, contrasting perspectives on, on, on XML I think are important to understand. Um, I noticed after um, getting this photograph that the, the caption underneath the clock says, says, Sun, observe the time and fly from evil. Um, it's, a, it's a church in San Francisco. And I'm going to try and observe the time um, and make sure that I, I, I finish within the allotted time slot. Um, so XML is a data model. Um, XML is being used, whether we like it or not, as an alternative um, to the relational model for, for, for data. Um, but it's not just an alternative data model. Um, it's coming at the whole problem of information rep um, representation from a slightly different angle. Um, firstly, it wasn't designed as a data model. XML was designed as a way of representing text and the structure of text. It was a, it was a, the, the M in XML stands for markup. I often have to remind people of that. Um, markup is a way of taking a, a textual narrative and annotating it to indicate its, its structure, its hierarchic structure. That's where XML came from. Um, it was found to serve a need in handling um, interchange of, of structured information, um, but that wasn't its primary design goal of the people who, who, who first built it. Um, so it started as a, a hierarchic representation of, of, of documents, and for that reason it was intended to be extremely flexible in terms of the kind of structures that it could represent, and it's that freedom that's enabled it to be successful as an inter information interchange vehicle. Um, we do find there are some unfortunate consequences of the fact that XML is being used as a data model but wasn't designed for the job. And if we designed it for the job, I think it would probably have been designed a little bit differently. Um, but nevertheless, um, its, its success comes because of the, the flexibility that it was designed to give you. Um, two other observations about XML. On the one hand, XML is extremely small and simple. Um, the basic XML spec is, you know, about 30 pages long, and most of that's just a list of Unicode characters. Um, on the other hand, um, the whole raft of XML specifications takes about a yard of shelf space. Um, so XML is, um, is one of these inverted pyramids. It's an enormous superstructure built on, on, on small and sometimes rather flimsy foundations. Um, the core standard is small and simple. Um, an awful lot has been built on top of it. Um, one of the reasons for XML's success, of course, is that the core is so small and simple. What that meant was that the cost of entry was very low, because ultimately the su success of standards depends on, on commercial factors. It depends on the, 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 an incremental benefit being greater than the cost um, of adoption. And the cost of adoption for XML was extremely small initially. Um, parsers, XML parsers were knocked up in a, in, in a weekend by amateurs. Um, then big companies started getting in on the act. Um, projects were able to adopt XML because free software was available. And when free software is available, then, then, um, then the programmers on the project download it and use it without asking permission of any project managers. And the company IT strategists don't, don't, don't get asked permission. Um, they just find that it's, it's already in use. And, and that they didn't have to do an evaluation and, 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 and compare it and have, have lots of meetings and debates about it. It, it just happened because it's, it's zero cost. 